tort law, an assault is somewhat different to a battery. Battery involves physically applying force to someone, whereas assault doesn't require any contact at all. Assault involves a threat to do harm, along with the immediate capacity to put that threat into execution. That last point, immediacy, was really the key in this particular case. A young woman, we're not told her actual age, was meant to be getting a lift from her sister, but she was using a public phone as her sister drove past, and so she missed her lift. A nearby man asked if she needed a lift, and while she was nervous about accepting the lift, she did get into the car. Once the car was moving, the man offered her money for sexual activity. She refused and opened the door as though to jump out, but the van was now accelerating and she closed the door again. The driver said, I will take you to my mate's place. He will really fix you up. Unsurprisingly, she was terrified. She opened the door and jumped out, even though by then the van was moving at 60 kilometres an hour. She was injured, but not seriously. The magistrate dismissed the assault complaint on the basis that the man's statement that he would take her to his mate's place was a statement about future conduct and that it did not present any immediate threat of harm. This doesn't pass the common sense test, and Justice White on appeal felt that it didn't pass the test of law either. He said, A present fear of relatively immediate violence was instilled in her mind from the moment the words were uttered, and that fear was kept alive in her mind from in the continuing present by continuing progress with her as prisoner towards the house where the feared sexual violence was to occur. It seems to me that the fallacy in the defendant's argument is the assumption that the words had effect only at the time they were uttered and heard, whereas they were ringing presently in her ears as a continuing threat without the necessity for repetition, second by second as they progressed towards the house. From this case, we learn that where the threat is continuous and continuing, that threat does constitute an assault, even though harm was not threatened immediately after the words were spoken. Mm -hmm.